have a look at the step-by-step -step process of how you solder pipe. Number one, you've got to cut the pipe, and you're going to cut that to fit whatever you need to do as you're building. You may use copper tubing cutters, sawzalls kind of not the best when you're doing copper because it leaves a lot of burrs, but you can clean that and sand it. But first of all, you make your cut. Second, you need to ream the pipe, especially on copper. You're going to ream the inside of the pipe, removing any burrs. If you're using a copper tubing or wheel cutter, the wheel as it cuts actually presses the material into the pipe, leaving a lip. If that is not removed, it can cause the water to swirl inside. A cavitation will happen and it can actually cause leaks in the pipe. So reaming is very important. You can get a simple pencil reamer for copper spin that around the inside, shave off that inside lip, and then you're ready for step three, which is to clean the pipe. We talked about the importance of having a clean copper surface. So we use a sandpaper or a mesh cloth, and we rub that around the edge of the pipe where the fitting is going to go, and we just scrub that until it looks shiny clean. Now the inside of the fitting needs to be cleaned as well. For that, you can use a fitting brush, Fitting brushes are created uniquely to fit inside a specific size of copper. So, for example, don't use a half inch fitting brush on a three quarter inch fitting. It's not gonna do a very good job. You use the correct fitting brush and it will brush the inside of that, cleaning that surface really well. Step four is to apply the flux. So you get that paste. Usually the paste comes with a brush in the can attached to the lid or maybe separate and you just brush that on, paint it on basically. You brush that onto the inside of the fitting, you brush that onto the outside of the pipe, and as you push them together, you make sure that there's plenty on there. I'll usually wipe off the excess once it's fit together. Then it's time to assemble the pipe and fittings. That's step five. You're pushing it together, and getting it set in place, ready to solder. Step six is to select the proper solder. Now this is something you'd probably have done before you even start the process. You go and you buy the solder from the supplier, and you're aware of the differences in solders and make sure that you use the one that is good for either potable water or mechanical system. Step seven suggests that you use fireproof shield. Basically, you just have to think through wherever you're gonna be blasting this flame. Are there combustibles around this? Are there areas that we need to protect so that we don't light things on fire that we don't want to light on fire? And once you've made sure that it's safe as possible, I say as possible because sometimes I've been soldering in joists or tight spaces and it's like, what can you do? You just turn on the flame and pray. The step eight is that we are gonna light our torch. Some torches have an ignition button. You can just click it and it will self light. Some of them you have to use a striker to be able to light the torch. But you get that flame going and from now on, you're really mindful of where that's aiming because you don't want to burn yourself or anything else that shouldn't be burned. Then we carefully apply that heat to the pipe. Step nine suggests that you heat the pipe first. That transfers some of the heat into the fitting, but when it's time to solder, you move the heat back onto the fitting and you aim it on the fitting so that that solder will be drawn towards the heat as you're heating that. Step 10 is that you apply the solder. You touch that to the edge of the fitting next to the pipe. And for me personally, I like to make sure that I've touched the entire fitting all the way around with the solder and that I have seen it melt into liquid. That way I have the very best chance of that being drawn into the fitting. Now as this is happening, you need to be careful not to overheat the fitting. If you're focused too much on the solder and not paying attention to your torch, you can burn that fitting. So you gotta pull that torch back once it starts to melt and kind of come and go with the torch and make sure that you're applying enough heat so that it will melt the solder, but not too much heat. If your copper starts to turn rainbow or especially if it's black burning or glowing, you've gone too far. Now that you're done soldering, you can turn off your torch and wipe the whole thing down. This says with a damp cloth, you don't want to put too much water on that at first. If you cool it too fast, you can weaken the joint. Once that solder is applied, it has kind of a metallic shine, almost a chrome look. But as you remove the heat and allow it to cool, it'll go back to kind of a dull hue, looks like the soldering rod. And then you know that it's cooled off enough that at very least you can move it. But you still want to be very careful, it's super hot. You cool down that fitting, again they suggest maybe with a damp cloth and then you put your torch and your tools away. Now, as we talk about soldering, I can't go over this topic without mentioning safety, right? 
there is a lot of danger involved with an open flame. Not only to the structures and things around you, but to you yourself. You've got to really think through the protection of your own body, your hands, your eyes. Um, if that splashes in your eyes and you're not wearing safety glasses, that's serious damage. I mean, serious damage. If it gets on your hands, I've had gloves on and solder just hits, just right seeps through the glove, third degree burns immediately. They, they burn deep, they burn hard. I've also been burned after my torch was off. The torch head was still hot, but I brushed it against my arm. That'll take the skin off immediately. So be really cautious when you're dealing with solder. Uh, be aware of what's hot and don't be the kind of person that's too tough to wear your personal protective equipment, your gloves, your glasses, anything else that might be needed in this situation to protect yourself. 